Today's show is sponsored by Profit Accumulator, the UK's number one match betting service. So what is match betting? It's a method that's used by individuals to profit from free bets and incentives offered by bookmakers. By leveraging one bookie's offer against another bookie's offer, it's possible to ensure that the odds are in your favor. And when you sign up to Profit Accumulator, they will walk you through how to do match betting with their easy to follow video guides. Profit Accumulator have a friendly seven day a week customer support team that will help you with any questions that you might have. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and you can start your Profit Accumulator journey today and you won't regret it. Hi and welcome along to Full Time. <laughs> I've got to blow the whistle, man. It was brilliant yesterday. Mm. A fantastic win by Arsenal. I'm still buzzing. The guys are still buzzing. You can see from James, you can see from Cecil's always smiling anyway, right? <laughs> but you can see from the guys, they're still buzzing, even though it's 24 hours on. Um, it was a great, great performance by Arsenal and a fully deserved. 2-1 victory. Welcome along, James. Welcome along, Cecil. We're going to be breaking it down for you guys. Um, how we won the North London derby. How we showed them lot that North London is still red. Um, and it was a fantastic performance, you know. Mm. I mean, when the teams came out and you saw Tottenham's team, they, were very, they went very strong. You know what I mean? They started with um, Kane, mm -hmm. Bale, Son, Son. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mora, yeah. Endombele, yeah, basically strength full team. strength team that they yeah. went with. Mm. But up until they scored that first goal, which was completely against the runner play, 100%. they were absolutely anonymous. Mm -hmm. And for most of the game, I think they only turned up in about the last 10 minutes of the game when yeah. Arsenal were just like, right, let's just see this out now. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm. let me come to you first, James. What did you make of it? Before a ball was kicked, was kicked, I was saying, fair play, Jose, you look like you're going for us. And Dombele, you know, in midfield with Hoybier and that front four that's been doing so unbelievably well against Zagreb and Burnley. Um, Zagreb, should, Burnley, yeah. you know, I did. I shouldn't disrespect, we didn't beat Burnley, but still. <laughs> we didn't beat Burnley, we didn't lose to Burnley, but we were all over Burnley, right? Mm -hmm. And that was at Burnley. Yeah. Now, this was a thing, I was on a podcast the other day with some Tottenham fans and they were giving it. And I was saying, yeah, you scored goals. You scored against Palace. You put four past them. Wolfsburger, these teams. But I said, <laughs> what are you going to do when you come to the Emirates? That's what I'm going to be very intrigued to see. Mm. Are you going to come at us and attack us the way you attacked Wolfsburger? Yeah, I expect you to do that mm. because you're a far superior team. Mm. But are you going to be brave enough to do that? Right. And when I saw the lineup and I saw that they went with Bale, yep. went with Son, went with Kane, it looked a very attacking yeah. lineup on paper. Mm. I was thinking, mm, maybe they have come to attack. Yeah. The, the Tottenham fans but, as well, Robbie. So the Tottenham fans that I was hearing from as well before the game, they were like, this is a strong squad. I'm expecting them to go for it. Yeah, yeah. So but I'm, you know what? After about five, ten minutes of that game, when I saw Arsenal players getting the ball, mm. David Luiz, Gabriel, at the back getting it, and there was no press on them, I was like, nah. They ain't coming today. Yeah. They're coming with their usual Mourinho tactics of sit in, sit in, try and catch on the counter attack. Mm. Because, listen, even a person who don't know nothing about tactics will know that Arsenal, in the past couple of games, when teams have pressed them, mm. that's what Olympiacos did when they went and go down to us and they got joy. That's what Burnley did. They got joy with mistakes. That's what um, the, the game against uh, Villa, mm. um, when Cedric got pressed, and it, or was it um, um, Xhaka? Mm -hmm. That's how you get joy. Yeah. They didn't do that because they were frightened of what was coming the other way and Arsenal dominated. I mean, oh, absolutely, they did. And actually, it leads on. We're going to chat about the starting 11 in a sec because obviously there's some big news around the before oh, we do. Start 11. Oh, uh, start 11. Let's just... Um, take our minds back to when me and James decided we wanted Lacazette in the starting 11, Robbie, and we had, to, we had some, some conflict. Let's just have a look at the clip. How Same can we energy go to the North London derby without Aubameyang? Oh. You know what, in the Premier League, what's it? he's been our main guy. 
in the Premier League in the last few games. He's a guy banging in the goals. We beat Leicester without a Bamiak. Yeah. Lacazette's also been on form. I think we're forgetting. He's got a better team than Spurs. That's why I'd have both of them in. I'd have both of them in. I don't think they work together, Robbie, with both of them in, though. A Bamiak off the left? Yeah. Bamiak like, on like, the left. Yeah. Lacazette down the middle. Me, to me, that, I, I'm, I'm looking on it. I'm, I want firepower in that game. Just like they got firepower. I want, why are we mm. lessening our, our firepower? Mm. Go in there with all your guns, I think we man. Are. I think we're just offering a different... It's yeah, just different. a different... Um, no, yeah, different I agree problems. with James. Well, though. you know what? It's a great debate. <laughs> so, yes. You're trying to lose your job. I mean, <laughs> I, I, listen. Listen, I, I wanted Aubameyang to start the game. Yep. And Aubameyang would have started the game had it not been for this uh, disciplinary action yep. that was mm -hmm. taken against him, which meant that he didn't start the game, which, by the way... I thought for that to come out before the game and North London derby, I'm like, mm, yeah. Arteta, brave decision. Big, brave, big decision. I agree with it because if the guy's been turning up late to, you know, he, he, you're the captain, you should be there first. You should be the first one on the bus cussing other players yes. to turn up late. But to do that publicly before a North London derby, if this goes wrong, mm. that's mm. all anybody's going to be talking about. 100%. Especially amongst the Arsenal fans. I'm not yeah. even on about mm. journalists or nothing. Mm. Mm. If so it goes right. Yeah, good job we won the game. Yeah, yeah you know? absolutely. And I, and I think, unlike Cecil, I'm here to make a truce with you, Robbie. Um, while I was very much, <laughs> while I was very much... Uh, You're boring, man. No, uh, no, no, don't, don't make a listen, truce. Listen, I, I, like, I like my job here. It's oh, nice. Yeah. It's, it's cushy. I'm enjoying it. Um, I wanted Lacazette because of everything we got from him. Fight. Like, mm. hard-working press. Like, making uncomfortable centre-backs mm. and we got that. That's why I wanted him over Bam. In fairness, I think you wanted Lacazette. No, no, I wanted Bam Lacazette. Bam Lacazette. Right. I, I, my right, my yeah. lineup was actually with Lacazette and the Bam. Yeah, it was, in fairness. But yeah. I'll tell you what, Smith Rowe, mm. yeah. who did did start on the left, was immense. He was, he was immense. We're going to look at his numbers in a bit, but I was going to say, I voted for Mary and you went for Gabriel and I thought he was absolutely quality. So, mm. fair. yeah, fair enough, we'll fair. go with that. Yeah, but yeah. here was the starting 11. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He, loves he it. does love it. Um, <laughs> we had three changes. Obviously, Cedric came in for Bellerin. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that was great. I'm really glad he did because Cedric's done nothing. To, it's, do you know what? I'm <coughs> fine with Arteta saying, I'm going to mix it up with Cedric and Bellerin mm. because he. So he feels Bellerin he's had got a great game against um, right. Olympiakos uh, yeah. the other night. So. And he, you know, he feels he's got good options there. Mm. He brought Lacazette in for the reasons we mentioned, and obviously Smith Rowe came on the left, who I thought was superb. And I thought he looked bright actually when he came on against Olympiakos. Yeah. Um, so you know that that seems to be working with him on the left. Those three players field. actually brought a lot of energy to the team, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they really did. They complement Saka in his work rate and his pace and everything. Mm. I wanted to touch on the dominance that you're talking about now. Obviously, whenever we do match stats, you see the same old graphic, shots, possession, passes. I wanted to look at five elements that I think illustrated our dominance more than sort of anything else. Can we look at possession, there's not a lot in it, and shots mm. at the end of the game, and you know, a shot that flies over the bar cancels a shot, doesn't it? I wanted to look at these, some key stats from the game. If you look at touches wow. in the box, we had 25 to Tottenham 7. If you look at the amount of crosses, and by the way, there weren't aimless crosses into nowhere. Mm. We were doing them with purpose, mm -hmm. with, with an idea behind them. 21 into the box to their eight, 10 shots in the first half to their one. You can see how dominant we were. We were so unfortunate to go behind. And seven shots outside the box. Again, if we weren't finding a way to break them down, we were testing them in other ways. We hit the crossbar, Cedric hit the post. Yep. Partey had a decent effort, I think. Oh, Lacazette had one as well. Mm. We were trying different things, and then we even beat them for tackles and interceptions in the game. And if you look at other defensive stats, in terms of duels, for example, we didn't come out on top of them, but we certainly did in that area. And I thought these were just five stats where mm. I thought it really illustrated our dominance. They're massive. They're, they're great. I think it shows yeah. that we were so much more up for it um, over, over Tottenham. And do you know what it also shows as well? It shows the amount of ways we can get goals in this team now. Like, we, like you said, shots out of the box, got a seven way more than, than Tottenham. And we saw recently in the week how that we can be a fetch from outside the box. And then touches in the box, 25 over their mm. seven. It's massive. And crosses have been coached. If you guys, I'm sure everyone watching watched the game. They knew where the players were. There were lots of cutbacks throughout the game and players knew the, where... The cutback to Odegaard. That's a very coached thing. Yep. I know you wanted to touch on this as well, which yep. fascinated you. So, Robbie, do you remember talking how much, you know, we always do things down the left and nothing mm. else? Good yeah. spot from you here, Cecil. I mean, yeah, we, I looked at the attacking thirds because at first I just thought there was all going down the left. What I saw in the first half, and I was like, wow, this, this is great, this is great. But then overall in the whole game, it was very balanced. 41% down the left, 41% down the right. It just shows that 
as a whole, becoming more of a balanced team. And we, yeah. we're dangerous early, down early, early on in the season, everything came down the left, didn't it? It was exhausting, yeah. 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 And, I, and that's what I, t- I think relied on was the left side. But now, it's very balanced. We're dang- both sides. We're so dangerous on both sides. And we seem to be more consistent. Mm. I just want to see this going forward. But yesterday mm. was... Oh, Despite all that, though, Ooh. we still conceded first. Now, mm. I know you do as you touch, right? I know you used to be a footballer, mm-hmm. like, play a very good level. That bit of skill. Oh. Did you do that? I mean, <laughs> do, you, do you know the thing is right with that with that goal that um, Lamella scored? I mean, it was an unbelievable goal. Yeah. But the other thing I thought about it right is that if you attempt that and <laughs> it goes wrong, you, that just bounces off a player or something. Your teammates gonna be looking at you thinking, "Yo, what are you doing? Yeah. Showboating this early in the game." Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an unreal goal. It was un- Robbie. Honestly, it was a touch of class, and I don't want to be here big in the up, but like, come on, it was. Yeah, it was through the legs of Partey as well and the position of it going in that bottom corner was, it was outrageous. Even to attempt it is outrageous. And I actually want to just quickly say, I hate Mourinho with a passion, but I have to credit him in a sense of he's, la- he's made his players believe that they can go out and do that. Now that, uh, been, that had nothing to do with Mourinho. Oh, what? <laughs> Serious, no, I believe, that, I had, believe that. That had nothing to do with Mourinho. Mourinho's the type of guy, if that hadn't come off, he would have been, he would have probably dragged took, him off. He would have probably took Lamella off. He would have already bought him on. Had nothing to do with Marina. Nothing. <laughs> well, we have a damn show where you two no, don't. I'm, not, don't I know, I know. I'm, I'm doing a tie. I'm giving no credit at all no, to I, listen, Mourinho I, I for that. I hate Mourinho. Listen, I'm, I'm a, giving I'm, him no I'm credit for that. I, I think that that's just down to the individual brilliance mm. of Lamella. Of Lamella. I, thought, I thought it was an unbelievable goal. Yeah, he has done it before. He's done it before, to be fair. I'll give you that. But it was so against the runner play. That was so annoying for me because... We did the woodwork twice. Mm-hmm. There was that chance that Lacazette had to... Um, yeah, he the, let it run, didn't he? He that let it weird. run. Yeah, and that was, was... You know, was we, we, we were dominating. Mm. Yeah. One shot. Dominating. One shot the, on look target. at that stat that you just showed. Mm. They only had one shot and they scored from yeah, it. In that first half, yeah, one annoying. shot on target, one goal. Yeah. It was annoying. We were killing them. We were absolutely mm. murdering them, which is why I think it was crucial that we got our goal when we did, just before half time. Just before mm. half time, that was big. Yeah. yeah. Clarton Odegaard. He's calling him Clarton Odegaard. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. To be fair, I called this game the Shodegaard. Yeah, even, it was, even that. He, he, he ran it. I mean, he was brilliant. Should we analyse that goal? Because mm, yes. um, I, was, I was so impressed with not just the goal and sort of... <laughs> Not, not just that he had that big moment in the game, but the mm. fact that he had the work rate to go with it. And I think almost when you do the basics defensively, you earn yourself that bit of luck. The ball falls to you in the right place. Yeah. or you, you know, you kind of earn those things. Mm. Maybe the gods of football are looking down on you. or something. I don't know. I believe in that kind of thing. <laughs> not the best analysis I know, you but make, we are going to... You make your own luck. You do. And I'm going to yep. analyse this a bit more properly rather than just talking about the gods of football. But <laughs> one thing we were seeing for a lot of this half, I'm going to point it out here, was the run, I'm going to do it in red here, Smith Rowe was making this run a lot. Yep. He was coming, when Tierney was occupying the, the, the sort of wider space on the left, Smith Rowe was making that run, he, he had Doherty on toast. I mean, he was finding it so difficult to keep up with him. But I'm going to give a little bit of credit here to Ndombele. What he does is he basically, he tracks Smith Rowe and he, he, he basically, that run's not on for him. Mm. It's not on. He knows he can go for it, but Ndombele is going to, he's going to match him for, for pace and speed or whatever. Tierney at this point realised, well, Doherty's having the roughest game he's probably had in a Spurs shirt. Tierney most often than not has the beating of his fullback anyway and decides to just take him on. So as you can see there, ndombele has gone with Smith Rowe, so Tierney goes for it. And then once he gets to the edge of the box or sort of the side of the box, Odegaard's picked up a lovely space where Sanchez and Old Vera have dropped too deep. Hoybier, or Ndombele's not cutting off the pass. Hoybier's not followed the number 10, which he should, and there's an obvious cutback. Mm. He finds him, and then obviously a little deflection off all the Virald, and in it goes. It was a really lovely goal. It was something that mm. sort of demonstrated what we've been trying to do for weeks. So to be yep. fair, all season under Arteta, yes. we've been trying that sort of thing. I'm really glad it came off. I'm really Tierney glad for Odegaard. Brilliant. Oh, he was. Tierney's was crucial to unreal, that. Man. Unsung unreal. hero. I know people are saying he had a great game, but I think he got overlooked by other players as well. I think, like you said, Odegaard definitely. Oh, I thought Tierney, Tierney was like, his delivery was good. Yep. He, and, and what you just said there, he was never scared to take a player on. Yeah, absolutely. He knew he had to beat in a docky. Mm. And he just, at will, he, 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 he'd either take him on or he put a great cross in. Mm. It was so good to watch. It man. was. It was so good. To, I love that player, man, Tierney. Yeah. He is such a good player. Mm. Um, and we, like you said, we got that back at the vital time. Then, uh, of course, we get into the second half. Any doubts about the penalty? I've seen there's been some Tottenham fans whinging about the penalty. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think... <laughs> 
look how clumsy it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's rash, isn't it? It's totally rash. <laughs> his name was son of his By business. Davison Sanchez. I, oh, I mean, yeah. I, you know, sh- you know, you know I, I don't know why people are moaning about yeah, it. It's a penalty all day long. He shouldn't be going that like, rash in the box anyway. Like, he's actually jumped in and, yeah, he's, he's gone in and it's got contact on it. So, for me, it was definitely definitely a penalty. Stonewall. Um, he's yeah. not got the ball and he's, he and he's got the ball, clattered uh, into lacquer. Mourinho, after the game, was moaning about, mm. about it being a penalty, wasn't he? No, yeah. and actually, here's his quote, which we can have a little laugh at. I don't want to call it a penalty because it is an offence to penalties. <laughs> <laughs> Mourinho comes out with the what outmost, is he talking outrageous about? stuff. Yeah. yeah I lo- it's a, it's a, listen, he hasn't got the ball. Mm. It's clumsy. Oh, he's I can off, never understand <laughs> players when they do that sort of thing because I'm just like, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. agreed you're agreed, asking for trouble. Just by even looking at that frame there, you can see you're asking for trouble. Mm. Mm. And, and also, you know, obviously this came, what, the 60-something minute, 67th, 8th or whatever it was. Mm. And Pepe's come on for Saka at this point. Now, I think it's difficult for Pepe, who's looked really good the last month or two. Yeah. He's come on to a game where the rhythm's kind of been set and he's having to fill in. Saka, I don't think, was having his best game, but I thought he was still playing mm. very well. You know, I, I, we've seen almost mm. elite levels from Saka recently. And okay. he wasn't there, but he, 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 did, he was playing very well. And Pepe came on, I thought, if anything, actually, I thought he had quite a poor game, or average, he didn't do all that. But his pass for Lacazette. The pass oh, for Lacazette. Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, yeah. I, you, you look on that, you've been bought on and the manager will say, go on and affect the game. He mm-hmm. did. Yeah. That was an unbelievable yeah. pass. That's what's made the problems for Davison Sanchez. Mm. And um, that's what's led to the penalty. And that's it's not just the pass, it's the interception. The penalty assist. Yes, a penalty, yeah. <laughs> a penalty <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. They that's a new one. <laughs> if only they, gave, if only they <laughs> Can you imagine they, if they gave assists for whoever won the penalty? <laughs> Vardy <laughs> would have loads of assists, wouldn't he? Literally knocking on the manager's door, I need my penalty assist yeah. bonus, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, of course, Fans were absolutely buzzing. Uh, me and Cecil, we did loads of interviews after the game and they were absolutely buzzing. Here's a, just a little snapshot of what some of the fans had to say. You, you, through, you keep you? with Jose, you know, tell him to keep looking up, looking down, whatever he wants to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but at the end of the day, you can look at whatever you like, Jose. But that's a mid-table Arsenal team and you come and park the bus and you still didn't win. We deserve that. 2-1. And I said from the beginning, I said from the beginning, 2-1, and they'll score first. Mm. Called it. Yeah, hey, Liv, tell them. Tell them to the camera. Harry Kane who, bro? Harry Kane who? He's still in Gabriel's back pocket. He's in that back pocket. As we speak, he's not out of there yet, bro. Total domination. But once again, we've been underestimated and it's absolutely brilliant. I c- Listen, I couldn't be happier for a more sour-faced, arrogant, self-indulgent, patronising person like Mourinho. Hi, London, welcome to London, London is what? London is red. Yes, tell them. Tell me again. London is what? London is red. London is red. red. R-E-D. London is what? <laughs> it's red, baby. <laughs> Some brilliant reactions there. <laughs> brilliant. I loved it, man. It was. I loved it, man. You know what I mean? I love to see fans when we win a North London mm. derby how happy they were. Of course, we weren't at the game and that's what made it so unusual. Mm. But, um, you yeah, know, I've, I mean, you, you interviewed them. Like, they were so buzzing. They were so it? buzzing. It was just, it was so, it was just lovely. Just the way the season's been, this, this season's been, it's been a, a rocky ro- roller coaster, really. And to get this win yesterday was, was emphatic. Not just mm. the fans, but here, being part of it here with you guys as well. Um, oh, yesterday was, was It was rocking all it was night. Rocking. It was rocking. And, um, rocking. and you know what? Sometimes you might beat a team like a rival, like a Chelsea or Man United, or, and it always feels good. But maybe there's a little part of you that goes, oh, you know, we are 10th, we're having a poor season, all that. And you know, those things. But when it's a North London derby, it does not matter. Yeah. You just love every minute of it because that's what rivalry is about. And if, you know what, we had to take it when Spurs won and they'll take it today. And one day mm. we'll lose to Spurs again. And we'll take it, but the thing about is about it, me. the thing that I loved about it is that we dominated. Yeah, 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 yeah. all over. We them. dominated the game, right? I've been looking at some of the Spurs guys, their chats yesterday. They're fuming. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, because they thought they were going to come and they thought they were going to run this game, right? Mm. And they're fuming because they got dominated. They cannot make a case mm. to say, well, if we would have done this and we yeah. were a bit unlucky with that, they can't. Yeah. They know, they know in their hearts of hearts, they got dominated, they got played off the park. Yeah, yeah they did. Right? By a very good Arsenal setup. And, you know, I know they lost Son, but we lost Saka. And we didn't have a Bamiang either. 
right? Yeah. So they actually had a stronger team out. They had all their big guns out. We didn't. Yeah, agreed. right. So uh, honestly, it was a really, really uplifting game for every Arsenal fan yeah. watching it. Um, man of the match. Who oh. do you go for? I've I got to say, it could be anyone and whoever you choose, um, I'll go with it. But I want to make a case for two players. We've spoken about Gabriel. them briefly, oh. but I just want to talk about Odegaard and Smith Rowe. A team like Spurs, you make it very difficult for you, especially for your creative, more, let's say, lightweight midfielders, though we know that they're clearly tenacious players as well. You know, four key passes and two for Smith Rowe and Odegaard. Jeez. A pass completion of 97%. Now, I never felt for one second that they were playing it so safe last night. I never no, felt that. No. And yet their numbers were that good. Wow. 37 passes in the opposition half for Odegaard, 26 for Smith Rowe. Touch is very high, but possession gains as well. This, so yeah, the James, this is amazing. Cause I just think, I don't remember seeing them get on the ball and go backwards or get on the ball and, no, and think to, to go side. Like they were, yeah, they were brave. And they dropped 97% pass oh. completion. That, <laughs> that is, that's spectacular. It's the future. Oh, sorry. That's really the, impressive uh, let, me give a, let me give a shout for two more players. Gab. Well, well, you got a shot. Gabriel has to Gabriel has, has, has He was got, immense. Immense. If it wasn't for, again, I'm sorry. yeah, again, unbelievable. He kept Kane. Quite, he pocketed yeah. it. Tell him, Robbie. It wasn't because even Kane. Listen, we know Kane is a dangerous player. Yes. Mm. Right. The goal he scored offside. So you know we, they played the offside trap right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Right. And then he hits the post from a set piece. But what else did he do? Nothing. We all know. We all know he's always going to be very dangerous yeah. from a set piece. Mm -hmm. But in open play, what did he do? Mm. Harry Kane, he didn't get a sniff. Mm. He didn't, and Kieran Tierney has to also get a shout as yeah. well because Bale didn't get a sniff. Did he play? Son didn't get a sniff when he was, <laughs> even when Son was on the pitch, he didn't get a sniff. They were brilliant. Yeah. I think those four yeah. it was got stood out let's, for let's me. Pick let's, let's, let's pick one. Let's pick one. And just a quick one. We're halfway through the month as well and we've got to have a man of the month. So let's just cry. We don't have to do it now, obviously. But let's just we're start. halfway through. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah, the month. So we're going to start, mm. obviously. To start uh, right, okay, man of the right. month. Yeah, we've got to, right. we do man of the month. I think we're saying as we're halfway through, no, we've got no, to pick one now. now. But we've got Who'd be leading your man of the month so far? Gabriel. Gabriel, yeah. William mm. was up there, remember at the beginning. <laughs> he was man. Of, he was up there at the beginning, but Gabriel has to. Right up now. Of the four up there, Tierney, Gabriel, Smith Rowe, and Odegaard. Gabriel and Odegaard, for me, I, I, I pulled them apart because they had two match-defining moments: Odegaard's equaliser and Gabriel's header off the yeah. line. Okay. And they are so key those moments. Yeah, that header off the line. Yeah. Me. Oh my lord. And I think I think when it they all played equally as well as each other. So I think we kind of got to go to the nitty gritty. You know what I mean? So, so it's you, down. You, you, yeah, who are you going? Well, you go. You go. Uh, first. I'm gonna go. You I'm go. gonna stick with Gabriel. And I'm. I'm. Remember, I'm a. I was a striker, and, but I can commend um, the defensive so, that, attributes that I Gabriel mean, that saved doing. us. He exactly. Saved us the point, so exactly. Yeah. I, and I've just been so impressed with him. I've been saying it. We said it from the beginning. My favorite pairing at the back is Gabriel and David Luiz, and Gabriel just steps in and just is so composed. I. I Gabriel for me. All right. You know what? We didn't say Luis in there as well. He had a good game he as well. He had a good game. He was very he good. He had a very good game I as well. I thought Jacka was immense as well. Jacka. Jacka. Yeah. had a really good game. I'm going to go. I'm going for Smith Rowe. Wow. Okay. I'm okay. going for Smith Rowe. I thought he was brilliant, man. He, he, he was. So, I know he came off before the game finished, but he was so energetic. Mm. He was creating so much mm. problems. Yeah. You know, he's a, he's a guy who's come through the ranks. He knows what the North London derby was all about. And he played like that. Mm, yeah, he he played with a passion, a drive. He was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was between him or Odegaard for me personally. Although Gabriel was immense. But yeah. the defenders didn't have a lot to do because right, yeah. I first felt that we, we were on them so much mm. up that end of the pitch. They couldn't even get the ball up to um any of the, you know, the attacking players. Mm, yeah. For me, yeah, Smith Rowe. Okay. He just epitomised um, everything, left. everything in it. And, and remember, that's not even really his position. Well, it, it is his position. We know he can play there, yeah. but he could play a number 10 as well. But he was, and he wasn't really, when I saw him starting there, I was like, 
I don't know, man. I would have started Pepe there, or maybe you know what I mean. Mm. But mm. he was brilliant. That's a yeah. good argument. That's not his natural position. That's a great argument mm. there, Robbie. To be fair, James Odegaard for me. So just, all, th- all three just different because Odegaard is brilliant because um, it was the complete performance. Everything Gabriel did really well. Everything Smith Rowe did really well. I thought Odegaard did all of that. Defensively worked super super hard. Got the goal. Dictated our play. There were moments where he had three men round him. I thought, oh, he's probably going to lose it here. This looks a bit and just a little like so trick cold. through the legs, yep. knocked it round and I thought, wow, that's, that's really classy. This breeds another big question then. We must sign him in summer. Is, like, we have to make it permanent. We have to make a permanent deal. I, mm. I can't ask for that anymore. Like, he's, he just seems a class above Odegaard. So I think that is something that we really need to focus on is making Yeah, there's a, there's a read of the week on the AFTV VIP where we discuss that. Um, these brilliant journalists that we have on it, they're discussing that. The, the, you know, three reasons why we should sign Odegaard mm. this summer. From what I've seen of him so far, I like what I see. He seems to fit the team as well. That's the most important thing. I'm mm. like, why go out and be looking at 40 mils for your, you know, your, your guy at Norwich? Um, Buendia. Buendia and these guys. Right, okay, I want Odegaard. <laughs> I want Odegaard over right? Buendia. Right? Because, <laughs> because I, I'm just looking at it, I'm like, at the moment, from what I'm seeing, he fits mm. the team perfectly. Yeah. He looks happy. That's, that's He massive. looks happy at Arsenal. Now... Mm. Are we going to be able to keep him? Are we going to be able to sign him? I get the feeling that if we make a good offer, mm. we can have him. Yeah. We can get him. He, despite what Real Madrid are saying, they want him back and stuff like that. They've got a lot of players in that area. They're not flush with money, Real Madrid. No, yeah, yeah. I like what I see with all the guys. He's an Arteta player. He leads the press as well. Yeah. Do we have he to- was the one always... He was, I mean, he's got so much energy. Mm. I was going to say, do we have to worry about like, the bigger, well, the bigger clubs, say, or, the, or some of the clubs trying to pinch him off no, us as well? No, I'll tell you why we don't, because he has said for a long time he just wants to be settled and play his best football. True. And he is proving he can do it in the Premier League. Now, mm. OK, granted, it's only been a month or two or whatever, but he's now gone to Leicester and performed brilliantly. Lovely little flick, drew him to William yep. for the Pepe goal. He's done a North London derby. He's obviously been very good for us in the Europa, Europa League. League. He, he's got goals for his game. He's proving he can do it. And... Mm. He looks a perfect And he's loved it. He is. I think you can see amongst it. I mean, obviously, there's no fans in, but he's obviously loved by the manager. He looks like he's loved by the teammates, right? He looks like he's settled in. Since he's come, he's become captain of Norway. That one, you know, that he will see those things. He goes, I'm here. I'm playing regularly for a big club. I can't be ignored playing for a club of this size. Mm-hmm. Do I go back to Real Madrid and sit on the bench? Even if I'm playing well, I might spend half of the season on the bench. Mm. Or do I want to play week in, week out, right here at the Emirates Stadium in the Premier League? That's what's going to We'll get the answers in the summer, but I'd yeah. love to see Arsenal. From what I've seen so far, sign him up. Uh, agreed. Sign him up. Agreed. That's been full time and uh, um, we've been absolutely buzzing, of course. Um, <laughs> Fantastic win, guys. Um, <laughs> so happy. What can I say? You, you know, you, you check it out. There's been some decent teams we've beaten recently. Like you said, we went away to Leicester, beating them, mm-hmm. beating Tottenham. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't lose to United. It's so frustrating now when you look back at the points dropped at Burnley. You know, you look back at that Villa game. Yeah. You know, we're, Wolves. you know, if, if oh. we, the yeah. Wolves game, if we can cut out some of these mistakes, you know, and add a few players to that team in the summer, three, four quality players to that team, it can be a good, because some, there's some players in that team, Gabriel, Tierney, these sort of guys, they're the future. Mm. They're the future of what we're watching right now. But North London is... Red. And always will be... Red. <laughs> always will be red. And you Tottenham fans, don't you forget that. <laughs> Big win for the Arsenal. Now let's move on to Thursday, Olympiakos at the Emirates. Let's get the job completed there. And let's see where we can go for the rest of this season. The season is still alive.